I'm standing at the very site where a devastating tragedy took place. Right here, hearts were broken, dreams shattered, and a family torn apart. Heartache, anxiety, brokenness. These are well-known symptoms that people suffer after experiencing terrible loss. A mum and a dad lost their blonde-haired, brown-eyed baby boy, Maverick, in a tragic accident right here on a family farm in the northern tablelands of New South Wales. This is their story of heart-wrenching pain and loss. But it is also a story of resilience, amazing hope and remarkable strength that this family has found. Make sure you hear this family's secret of how to find the strength to go on when your whole world crumbles. This is the Northern Tablelands of New South Wales, Australia, an area known for producing beef cattle, sheep and grain crops. The family farm we are visiting today was believed to have been settled as early as 1901, with the original family homestead still in use today. Five children were raised here, along with pet goats and kangaroos. They were happy times and special memories. This bond with the land would later lead the second youngest of the five children to return with his own wife and family to make this their family home. Some would call them the perfect family if you were to meet them for the first time today. Mum, dad and three kids living the Aussie dream to own land and run their own successful business in a rural area. But someone is missing from the family the little ray of sunshine that once brightened each new day with his happy smile and funny antics is no longer here. He was daddy's little helper who loved the farm and animals and he especially adored his daddy Dale. Mavi would always be in a mad hurry to, to get dressed and get out to go work with dad and if I would take him into his room to try and dress him and I pulled out a shirt that didn't have a collar, he would be most upset because in his little mind they were pyjama. He wanted work shirt and he'd get quite frustrated with me for taking too long and he'd say, no mum, no, go work, go work, work shirt, work shirt. So we had to always pull a shirt out that looked like dad's work shirt. Well, Mavi was an awesome little helper. He was like my right hand little mate. Um, whenever I'd go outside to do something, he'd say, go work, Dad, go work, Dad. And he'd rush to the door and shove his boots on as quick as he could, usually on the wrong foot. And then we'd go outside and do whatever it was. When I'd come home from the bees, Mavi would be the first one out to greet me. He'd come running out and, and I'd pull up and then he'd help me to undo the straps, and help roll up the straps as best, best he could. He also loved going on the motorbike with me. Um, whenever I'd go to start the bike, he'd like, Moo coming, Moo coming, Moo bike. And he'd be out there with me. Well, we had a great little sense of humour. He was um, quite a, yeah, he was a fun little kid. And he, um, just an example of his little sense of humour was I was busy sweeping the floor one morning and, you know, trying to get all the jobs done and, and Mavi spied a box of chisels in the pantry and he comes out he gets that box and he comes out and he asked if he could have some and uh, I was like no Mavi no put them back and uh, he really wanted those chisels and he's, he's looking at them and he asked me again and he's like please can I have these chisels and um, I was like no put them back and um, he looks at the box of chisels and he realises he's not going to get those chisels right then. So he um, grabs that box of chisels and he throws it into the middle of the dust pile that I was sweeping in the middle of the floor and he just pelts it down there and he turns resolutely and away and goes, let it go, let it go, and walks off and, and that was the end of the chisels. He, he just had such a fun little sense of um, humour and as well as, you know, being... Just, I don't know, I'm really proud of, of the little bloke that he was. He, he could just, he knew when to let stuff go. 
sometimes. <laughs> and um, yeah, he was a brave little fellow. Avi really, really loved music. He always singing and stuff. And I remember we went to this family camp thing. And then the song there, the tent next to us, the opening song was always a song, My Lighthouse. We used to listen to the music. So then he's, he just made up his own little version because we couldn't hear it properly. And then he'd just go around saying, My Lie Lie, all the time. Yeah, and now we always sing it. It's one of our favourite songs. And yeah, we just wish Maverick was here to sing it with us. Well, his other favourite song was Let Your Light Shine, so clearly the light theme seemed to work for him. Let your light shine. Whoa. Every time uh, before Mavi went to bed, then he always had to have everything in a certain order and we'd have to have the bedtime prayers, which was gentle Jesus, meek and mild, look upon a little child, pretty my simplicity, suffer me to come to thee. In my little bed I lie, heavenly father, hear my cry, Lord protect me through the night, keep me safe till morning light, for Jesus' sake, amen. And then we'd have the bedtime stories and the hugs and the kisses until finally Mavi would say, light off, door on, which meant that he wanted the light on and the door open. We brought our family up to know and love God because that means everything to us, our faith in God. So naturally we instilled it into our children. Mavi really loved, um, he had a favourite verse and he also had lots of favourite songs, but his favourite verse was um, Proverbs 28.1. And it said, um, the wicked run when no one is chasing them, but the godly are as bold as lions. Rah! He brought a lot of fun and happiness into our home. He was, we just loved him. He was the centre of our universe, the glue in our family, the connecting link. Uh, we're all just so proud of him. But one sunny day, this family's beautiful world just crumbled into pieces. It started out as a day of happy smiles and special times together. Maverick enjoyed his mum and dad's undivided love and attention that morning during bedtime cuddles. After breakfast, mum left to run some errands in a nearby town and Dale and Maverick went to do some jobs on the family farm. Little did she know that morning was going to be the last time she would see her son alive. Soon after Jessica arrived home, she heard Dale's traumatised voice at the house gate yelling, Jess, quickly, call the police. Maverick is dead. So I heard his voice. Um, I heard him calling out and um, I, I, I could hear the trauma in his voice and um, I, I knew instantly that it, things were not okay, but I, I couldn't comprehend it. I, I couldn't, I couldn't understand. He's saying call the police, and um, and I think no, I need to call an ambulance. And he's being very adamant that I need to call the police, and that Mavi had in fact died. And um, I could see, I, I got a slight glimpse of him standing at the door there holding Mavi, and I could see that he was limp, and um, it. it it was very difficult to try and understand what was going on I, and I, it, it didn't make any sense. Tragically, Maverick, their precious little boy, was killed instantly that day in a terrible farm accident involving a forklift. Um, Jess didn't hear me right away. I was standing at the gate calling and calling and, you know, just holding my lifeless little mate that had only been with me minutes before, um, uh, not knowing if I was in a dream or reality. Um, my best little mate had suddenly become a farm accident statistic and there's no one to blame but me. Um, once I got outside um, and I could see Mavi was lying there and um, Dale was standing there and um, I... I just stood 
at the gate and I just stood and screamed at the mountains and I just screamed and screamed to just let the energy out and um, I just I knew that I had to make a choice I, um, I I just in that moment knew that I had a choice to make and that was whether I could choose love or I could choose hate. I could turn around to Dale and start yelling and screaming and shouting at him what happened because I didn't know what happened. I could just see Mavi there. And I could be angry with him and, um, or I could just turn around and see a broken man there that has just lost his son. And I can choose to love and to uh, be in that space and to be together with him and uh, I'm really grateful God gave me clarity in that moment because I could see in those split seconds that if I chose the path of hate that I was going to lose everything that I loved but that I could choose the path of love and we could stand there together and we could do this I wanted to wake up from this nightmare like you normally can. I felt like I was stuck in a bad dream, but in an instant my worst fears had become reality. Looking back, and even at the time, I was amazed at the control and strength Jess showed and the attitude of wearing this together. Um, I know it was an accident. I love you. This is Satan's fault, not yours. Family and friends gathered to be close to the family and support them during the darkest hour of their lives. How do you go on when your whole world crumbles in one day? The trauma, the heartache, the pain, the emptiness just doesn't go away. You feel helpless to change your devastating situation and feelings of despair wash over you like ocean waves in a storm. Dale and Jess, I can't even begin to imagine what you've both been through since your son passed away. Our family members have told me stories of amazing courage through your pain. Would you just for a moment let us into your world to find out what it was that helped you to cope and find strength to get through this? So when um, Mavi had first died and Dale and I are sitting there holding him, um, just waiting for the first responders to arrive, uh, you know, the whole world has fallen apart and you, you just, just one thing came into my mind um, and it was a Bible verse, it's Psalm 23. And it says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. And that that was what gave me strength to keep breathing, to keep sitting there um, until the first responders got there. And it was the most painful day, moment of my life. And it still, it still hurts today. Before we lost Mavi, we had lost a little boy that was born too early. Um, we called him Sunny and it was a very difficult experience for me. Um, and I felt like the whole world was black and dark and I, I really struggled to cope. Um, I, I couldn't see the sunshine, I couldn't feel... Um, I couldn't feel hope. I felt completely broken and um, just just very dark and black and, and hopeless. And I remember sitting out on the back step. My kids did School of the Air and um, they were in their schoolroom and I was just sitting on the back step feeling broken and alone and um, just hurting so bad inside. And um, I was just sitting there and I felt... I, I don't know if I felt it or I heard it, um, but I believe God spoke to me and he spoke to my heart and he said, I, I heard the words, I felt the words um, that I lost a son too. And that changed everything for me. I, I suddenly felt like 
God understood. He knew I wasn't alone in my pain and he, he understood perfectly what it was like to lose a child. And that I, I just remember in that moment, I suddenly felt the sunshine and I felt my heart felt warm and I felt wrapped in a big hug from God. And today that's what still gives me strength. When I lost Mavi, that it was even more traumatic and difficult, but I knew God was with me. I knew that he was holding me still and I knew that he understood and um, was going to walk beside me in this pain as well. Well, I'm just amazed at the grace and forgiveness Jess has shown me. She could easily blame me for what happened. Accident or not, it was certainly my fault. I live with a constant reminder in my mind, why was I so dumb? Navi was in my care, which only adds to the already awful burden of losing my little mini-me, Navi Moomar. I'm just so thankful to everyone, including God, that they've forgiven me and I'm slowly letting go of the guilt. As Christians, we have hope beyond the grave. This is not the end. Yes, our little boy is not with us now, but the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 18, that we don't need to sorrow as people who don't have any hope. Let me read this to you, it's really exciting. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another with these words. So, this says that when Jesus comes back, we'll get our little boy back and we'll see him again and get to huddle, cuddle him and squeeze him and, and we're just hanging on to that. And, um, and that's why we've called this garden, Mavi's Garden of Hope. Dale and Jess, have you ever questioned why? Why this was allowed to happen? Definitely, especially at, at first, that was just the biggest question in my mind. Why? Why did God allow my little boy to die? Especially after I felt Mavi was such a gift. He was such a special treasure after losing um, my other babies that I felt like he was the sunshine, he was such a present from God and I, I couldn't understand why God would allow him to be taken away and it really, really hurt me. Um, I wanted to know where where was Mavi's guardian angel at that moment, you know, why, why? And um, I just came to understand that I don't, it's not about that. It's not about why. And I don't need to understand why. I, I need to know that God is still on his throne and I believe that he is and that he is king and Lord and he, he's got this. He's, he's already saved us. Jesus has died on the cross and, and we are, um, we're, we're on the other side of that. So um, I, I just need to focus on the next step, every little step and forward and that Jesus is walking with me. I just need to breathe and take the next step. Sometimes when I think, why me? And then I think, why not me? If even God had to lose his son, what makes me exempt? One of my favourite Bible verses is something Jesus said, which is recorded in John 16, 33. These things I've spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. Be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. Maybe this is an opportunity to let God take control and teach me to trust him. I often hang on to the words of a soul. Um, it's called Oh Lord by Lauren Daigle. And it says, Your strength is found at the end of my road. Your grace reaches to the hurting. Still through the tears and the questioning why, I will stand my ground where hope can be found. Jesus is the only one offering to give my boy back to me someday. So I'm hanging on to that and I'm sticking with him. Until he, as the song says, takes what's wrong and makes it right. 
Um, I get a lot of comfort from reading um, God's Word, from reading the Bible. I find promises in there that I love and underline them and I have a journal that I write them in and um, that that I can look through at any time. That gives me um, lots of hope and comforts me and encourages me. I also save them on Pinterest and I can scroll through them on my phone any time that I want to and friends and family send them to me often and it, it just brings me little bursts of hope and comfort throughout the day. Uh, so I had the opportunity after Mavi died to uh, join a Bible study group and I um, join up with a group of ladies over the phone and we just study the Bible and on a Wednesday night and then church on the weekend it, it's like I've, I've just got to get to Wednesday and then I've just got to get to the weekend um, and that's been that, that's kept me alive really um, it's all about communities and um, just our communities that have been around us and and just checked on us and um, just having places, people to talk to and people that care. I'm on the farm a lot and uh, just being able to go for walks with my dogs and hanging out with my cows and um, it's just really therapeutic for me. I keep in mind that the best days are yet to come. Life on this earth is full of heartaches, challenges and trials. But because of Jesus, we can have hope and peace in this world and amazing happiness in the world to come. Perhaps you've been in that place where you feel like your whole world is crumbling around you. Perhaps you've received news that you or a loved one has a life-threatening illness, news that has sent you reeling. Some of you have experienced a breakdown of trust in your relationship and your heart and your relationship has been broken. Maybe you've put blood, sweat and tears into building a future for your family and now you've lost everything. Or perhaps you too, like Dale and Jess, have experienced the valley of the shadow of death by losing someone who is precious to you. Whatever it is you're going through or have suffered in your life, never forget that there is someone who loves and cares about you. Someone who walks beside you through the darkest valley. You may doubt his love because your pain is so great. You may feel those waves of despair washing over you and wonder how you can go on. But here is a promise to comfort you. In all their distress, he too was distressed and the angel of his presence saved them. God understands what you're going through. He suffers with you. He won't always fix the situation in this life, but He'll always be there to comfort you and strengthen you. He gave His Son to die for you so that you can experience life more abundantly. Because of Jesus, we can have hope. Because of Jesus, we can have peace, even when our world crumbles. Because of Jesus, the dead will rise again and families will be reunited, never to part again. The best days are yet to come. And the pain and suffering of life on this earth is only temporary. One day, God will wipe away every tear from your eyes. There will be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. If you'd like to experience the peace and hope that Dale and Jess have found in knowing God and trusting His promises in their life, and if you want to be ready when Jesus comes again soon, I invite you to give your heart and all your struggles to Jesus as we pray. Dear God, thank You for hearing our hearts cry today, that You feel our pain, You see our tears. Lord, we are broken. Right now in this moment, we give our heartache and brokenness to you. Please come into our hearts, Lord Jesus. Please heal us. Speak peace and hope even now into our souls that need a touch from heaven today. Come, Lord Jesus, come soon. We long for the pain of this life to be over and eternity with you to begin. Keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. And may we come to know you, the source of hope and peace, and one day see you face to face. I pray in your precious name. 
Amen. Life is fragile. A family from a rural farming district in the northern tablelands of New South Wales understands this better than many of us. A day that began with happy smiles and special times together ended in horrible tragedy when their precious two-year-old son was killed in a machinery accident on the family farm. How do you find the strength to go on when your whole world crumbles? Is it possible to find hope and peace amid such heart-wrenching loss and tragedy? If you want to find out more about how you can experience hope and peace when your whole world crumbles, then I'd like to recommend the free gift we have for all our viewers today. It's the booklet, Finding Hope When All Seems Lost. This book is our gift to you and is absolutely free. There are no costs or obligations whatsoever. So make the most of this wonderful opportunity to receive the gift we have for you today. Here's the information you need. Phone or text us at 0436 333 5 in Australia or 020 422 2042 in New Zealand or visit our website www.tij.tv to request today's free offer and we'll send it to you totally free of charge and with no obligation. Write to us at P.O. Box 5101, Dora Creek, New South Wales, 2264 Australia, or P.O. Box 76673, Manukau, Auckland, 2241 New Zealand. Don't delay. Call or text us now. If you've enjoyed today's journey to a farm on the northern tablelands of New South Wales and our reflections on the hope that only God can bring, then be sure to join us again next week when we will share another of life's journeys together. Until then, remember the ultimate destination of life's journey. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. He wants to be with you, to meet with you today. He wants to be with you, won't you let him?